another Woodenville. Mm -hmm. More Woodenville. Mm -hmm. He has all the Woodenville. Welcome to the Woodenville vault. We have Woodenville. Wait a minute. What? What? Oh, good, 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 good. Good, good. it's good. Uh, for a second, I thought this was not what I intended to bring down, but it is. Okay. Okay. More Woodenvilles. Yeah. Scott Peicher? Uh, Scott Peicher, yes. Scott Peicher, you patron saint of whiskey. Now I did these because yes. this is their rye, okay, and their bourbon. We just did the yeah yeah yeah. Rye. But how does it compare? Finished with toasted applewood staves. Okay. So off the backs of that cask rye, what they did with this is they took their rye, they aged it. Here, you do that one. I'll do this one. They aged it a re you know the amount of time that they always age things. Right. You have a knife now. Well, no, I've always had this multi-tool, mm. which is absolutely. Nice. Almost worthless for everything other than except this. for this. Yes. That's weird. I think I just snapped the end off of my blade on plastic. Really? Yeah. Kind of weak ass blade you got. I don't in. know. I, I've probably been sloppy with it many more times before now, and it was already weakened. Okay. A lot of stabbing. Yeah, a lot of stabby stab. No. Let's start with the rye because we just have a fresh memory of that one. Yeah. And then I'll get us glasses for the bourbon. Mm -hmm. So, applewood. So what they did was they took it, they aged it, mm -hmm. and then they took applewood staves, yeah. charred them, and dropped them into the barrel to finish it, into the existing barrel. So applewood, is that, I don't know, is that uh, just wood from an apple tree? Probably. Oh, you don't know either? I don't know. I mean, yes, yes, I would look at it as just apple tree, but we don't know which apple tree, there's a lot of right, apple trees. Yeah, there's different kinds of apple trees. Yeah. Huh. And then, but how cool is and that? That's not oak, is it? No. So well, it's not. They didn't put it in an applewood barrel. Right. They, they just put staves sticks in there. of applewood. So, and then I'm I'm very quickly going off on a tangent. But how much can you just cram that barrel full of sticks from different kinds of wood, and it still be fine because the barrel itself is oak? What do you, I don't understand what. The so whiskey is. needs to be in, a, in an oak barrel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is no longer a bourbon. It's finished with. You changed the category by putting those applewood staves in there. Okay. So it's rye finished with and bourbon finished with. Now. Got it. Yeah. Again, Ben, there is a, it is less so than the Woodenville we did yesterday. Mm -hmm. But there is like this slight rubber note on this one right here. Did you pour yourself the same one? Uh, this one. This one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, it, there's also a red candy note. Oh, I got you. Of like some a, sort. Kind of like a artificial cherry flavored candy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wonder if that's the applewood. Oh, it's that other one, but a little simpler and sweeter. Yeah, it's simpler, and it's got a little bit thicker, denser, more concentrated of a body, but it didn't have any right. of these weird, interesting... Now, it's 100 proof, so they didn't prove it to the floor, but it drinks really soft for 100 proof. Yeah, soft and... Hmm. You know what? That <laughs> so, feels, it feels like... I'll get better at tasting here in a second. First approach, though, mm -hmm. it felt like a very generic whiskey flavor. Until... Yeah, it's almost like... In, it took the complexity of the uh, Woodenville rye that we've had before yeah. and softened off all of the complexities into a really more simplified, sweet, predictable direction yeah, of a rye. It's kind of like a flavor's congealed into this. That's very bizarre. Huh. It took it more down the path of a generic rye mm -hmm. that's slightly sweet. Yeah, there's just a, there's a few different flavors, but it's all I, I want to put the qualifier of slightly in front of each of these flavors. It's slightly I'm honey. Getting it's slightly. I was gonna say grassy, but it could mm -hmm. be citrusy. Mm -hmm. Now I'm getting all of that same mint, and I'm getting that same sort of like grassy, grainy cinnamon and baking uh, bread, like a bready note. Yeah. But I'm also getting that hard red candy of some sort, and a sort of softened. Mm -hmm. It is interesting something. how a lot of whiskeys will have. So a, a, a center of the flavor that just lives right in here, mm -hmm. it's kind of like this dense kernel, and a lot and some other whiskeys, a lot of this is kind of category dependent, but a lot of whiskeys will just have that dense kernel, but then also have all these other weird things happening, right? Like uh, you know, like rings and satellite moons on a planet, yeah, and things that'll like swell up for a moment and then fade off, and then you know it'll unfold into a different flavor, and there'll be like a thread of something that shows up for a moment halfway through. And, 
Yeah, but in the other times it's just thunk, right there. This is one of these thunk whiskeys. Yeah, just which solid. There's nothing bad about it. Right, but yeah. it is simple. Yeah. All right, let's switch to the bourbon. This is a bourbon cask strength released only at the distillery. Okay. Uh, Applewood stave, one barrel. Okay. Specifically barrel two, three, four, five. Ooh. Huh, what are the odds? So in this AB, you put your nose in that. A little bit of peanut? Yeah, peanut dust, like yep. the skin. And with all the sweetness, it's almost like a peanut brittle. It really is. But a peanut brittle that's more peanut than brittle. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's more actual peanuts than candy flavor. Like a payday. I don't know. I think that's the one with all of them. I think it's peanuts. That's all the peanuts? I don't remember, actually. Or it's Goodyear. Is it Mr. Goodyear that's peanuts? I don't know. I don't yeah. really do the candy. The peanut ones were always my least favorite. No, I liked them because uh, they're crunchy. Yeah, but you can get crunchy with, like, I like the almond ones. That's my go-to. Almond Joy? Almond, no, anything with, no, almond Joy and coconut, and I don't like that. Almonds. Anything with chocolate and almonds, I'm a fan of that. Or chocolate and hazelnuts. But you like green spot a lot. Mm -hmm. And you always say... Like, I like the flavor of coconut, but there's a texture. <laughs> and the Almond Joy has that gritty, grainy coconut texture <laughs> so. in it. I really love coconut uh, snow cones. <laughs> okay. That's like my favorite yeah, snow cone good. flavor. So, uh, there's a sponsorship that we're considering for our other channel. And they sent the stuff. And um, uh, I'm going to try it out today for the first time. Mm. Uh, with Brianna, mm. <laughs> because I'm looking at the sponsorship. I won't say what it is, because maybe we don't like it. We don't do it. Uh, and I'm looking at this. It's like, no, we're not going to bring Daniel in on this. No, there's no way. It's like, why? Just ask him. No, texture. Texture. He he may absolutely adore the flavor, mm -hmm. but the texture is going to throw him well off. Yeah. And then Brianna was walking in the room. She saw the box. This is like, <gasps> oh my gosh! I have to. So. She's, she's in. <laughs> yeah, yeah so she's we'll, cool. We'll try it if she thinks it's good, too. Yeah, know your crowd. We'll do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you are... Right. <laughs> you want to get on Daniel's... Uh, you know, it's easier to get on your bad side. I was going to say, if you're going to get on your good side, I don't know. He's a complicated and exotic creature. If you want to get on his bad side, it's very easy. Just introduce a, a weird texture to him. Yeah. <laughs> and or smell. Uh -uh. <laughs> yeah. He's just put off for the rest of the day. So the flavor on this is not what I expected from a bourbon. This okay. is the most dramatic alteration of a classic bourbon flavor from those Applewood sticks. I will say it does have that bourbon cherry note. It does. Yeah. It does have that same candy. Mm -hmm. But taste it, and it's that hard candy is dominating anything else that would have been like a classic bourbon for me. It, it does dominate. Mm -hmm. It is a very cherry hard candy. I mean, it's definitely not a ride. Definitely more a bourbon. But, yeah, it's a very cherry hard candy forward flavor. And mm -hmm. then, you know what? Across these, like these two wooden bills and then the one that we did yesterday, mm. I think there's one thing that I wish was slightly different. This is me nitpicking because I don't think there's a bad whiskey in the bunch. <laughs> but the ethanol texture, the effect of it, that mm -hmm. dinginess, the, the elbow throwing of that ethanol layer, right. seems to be just a little bit past the flavor the class. flavors. Yeah. Yeah, there's just it's it's leading alcohol forward. Yeah, and like I feel instead that, of carrying all these other things with it. Right. And I the, wonder if they're. That's calm, not to so. say that the flavors can't keep up. The flavors are right there almost. Mm -hmm. They're just a behind what the alcohol is throwing at you, and you feel that, and it's like one of the first flavors. I wonder if they're doing a hybrid still, like a combination pot column, mm. and it's stripping some of the things from it. Yeah, I wonder. So I wouldn't complain if anybody poured any one of these for me. No, no, they're but, all. Very good. Mm -hmm. Do you ever feel weird that it's, it's really tricky being a reviewer sometimes mm -hmm. because on one hand, context is hugely important. And a lot of times whenever there's something like this, it feels like I'm nitpicking a bit, a bit more oh, yeah. than whenever there's something that's obviously more budget, entry level, cheap, and I'm giving it a lot more grace yeah. because it's so it's much weird. more affordable. We talk about this. It's like it's like when I had a uh, when I was teaching music. Yeah. When I had the kid who was like barely holding the string down without buzzing it. Right. And he successfully played "Smoke on the Water" in rhythm. Yeah. It was like, well done, bud. Right. Finally, you did it. Yeah. And then there's this kid over here yeah, yeah. who showed up already able to play the intro to "Stairway to Heaven." Yeah. And I'm nitpicking his yes. wrist positioning. Right. And like that's not, I mean, that wrist positioning is working for you now, but you're gonna have carpal tunnel in three years. Right. You're gonna need to start to learn this. I want you to stop using your pinky 
as filler That's exactly and start it. using your peak as precision. Yeah. But the kid was already leagues above right. the other kid. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it would be an easy problem to solve if the pricing across the board was very similar from place to place. Right. But it, there's so much variation. It's not like we can say, okay, guys, context for this is 20 to $25. Because, you know, on the other side of the country, it was like it could be $35 to $40. Right. And that's a whole different, you know, spectrum uh, consideration and the context for the, the whiskey to, uh, to consider. I don't know. It's tricky. Bye. <laughs> you, got, <laughs> you still got some comments I know, somewhere. Okay, I'm, 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 uh, we got Matt B. Heiss. Take a freshly emptied Glencairn glass, but the opening up to your ear about half an inch away. Think listening to a seashell. Mm -hmm. I did this for my wife, and she asked me if that was the sound of the non-ocean. And I, to I told her, no, that's the sound of my whiskey running out. Yeah. Huh. Getting a little low. <laughs> it's a very funny move. You'd be sitting next to... Anybody. Uh, next to your person and be like, you hear that? It's the sound of you getting me another whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like my dad who made me get him a re drink refill for like six years. Oh, he scammed you. Oh, he scammed me big time. Hard. But... Yeah. Never, Luckily, the restaurant he always, we always had to go to where that rule applied closed. Fun and they don't exist anymore. Rockers, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think it's a couple that, locations. That exist, location, but, I feel is, yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> it wasn't all restaurants. Uh, don't hit the player, man. <laughs> hit the game. Yeah. Uh, well, we got the Biswabrata Kundu. What whiskey being kept? Does whiskey being kept on a shelf in a room which uh, reaches almost 40 degrees Celsius affect mm -hmm. it? That sounds hot. Yeah, that's 100 plus. Um, uh, yes. Uh, but here's, how, here's why. If a bottle is correctly sealed, then the temperature shouldn't affect it that badly. Mm -hmm. um, if the bottle is not, then that, that massive press of vapors wanting to come out of the bottle is going right. to rupture the perfect seal and things will evaporate and the whiskey will change. We did an episode about this on our other channel called Does Heat Ruin Whiskey? Mm -hmm. And we had to take a couple of runs at it because the container, the lid, mm -hmm. that we, we sous vide, we did a sous vide with right. the whiskey in this thing. Uh, and it, I think the container may have interacted with the ethanol in such a way that it, it leached some flavor. Yeah. So we did it in a different container. So the first run at it, it was like, oh my gosh, heat absolutely ruins whiskey. Yeah. But then the glass version. But then the version was all glass. I was like, mm -hmm. well, not, I mean, it's. Uh, nah. As long as your seal is tight. Yeah, yeah. So now, it's not like a game changer. It's not going to ruin everything and coat completely destroy it and it falls apart like it would something like wine. Especially if it's not constant. Like if the room is always 104, like don't store your whiskey in a sauna, right? <laughs> but uh, if it just is spiking periodically, there's a good chance you'll be okay as long as the seals, the corks hold. Yeah. And also, maybe if you have something super expensive. Maybe don't do that. Maybe you just say uh... Unless you just like live in a hut in the tropics mm -hmm. and you don't have a choice. I still like Woodenville. Yep. And I just I've wish, liked everything we've done from them. I just like the I just wish the ethanol layer was a little bit less pronounced because the flavors are there. I just feel like the ethanol is just a tiny bit past where the flavors want to live. Yeah, I agree. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for a friend. Steal, may you steal your liver's heart. And if you drink, may you drink with us. <laughs>